Today, we upsize our fluid beds. So welcome back to STG. If we haven't met, I'm Adam. Glad you're joining me today. Uh, today we're going to do a little something different. We're going to look at fluid beds. I've been using these single units fluid beds for a while now. They work really well. Each one of them runs off of uh, one pump in the back. I've got two of them so I can dip in one color and dip in another color. I'd like to upgrade. I want to get something bigger. I want to get something where I can do um, say four colors at a time. So piece of wood here. Went to Lowe's earlier. Got an upsized um, uh, got an upsized air compressor and enough PVC to do four of these, maybe even five. We'll see how it goes. Um, and mount them directly onto here. One compressor in the back that'll run all of those. So figured, why don't I take you along with me? So let's get started. So this is what we're after. You can see we've got four stations. Each one will have a line that goes to it. We'll have its own separate valve so I can turn the air on for each of the different paint colors. These will be mounted down, glued down, and stay put. Be able to pick this up, move it around as I, as I want to. Each one of these units is made up of a two inch piece of PVC, a two inch coupler, and a three inch piece of PVC. We will glue these together and then underneath each one will also have a cap underneath and we'll we'll seal that up so no air can get out um, again those will be attached down below and then each of the paint units another two inch coupler so it slides on and off of the air source and then a three inch piece of PVC and its own top Tops are critical when you're doing with, when you're dealing with uh, powder paint because if any liquid um, gets into the powder paint, it makes it clump up, doesn't make it flow as well in the fluid bed. So these are nice too because you can write on the top whatever color it is that you want, and then just swap them out as you see fit. So on to the next step. So we could use silicone or some sort of caulking or whatever to connect. All these pieces together connect this uh, bottom plate to seal up the bottom uh, I find it just as easy to use super glue it uh, seals just as well and it doesn't take nearly as long for it to set up and cure and be workable so got some Gorilla Glue super gel we will want to get it around all of this lip I'm try not to get this on my fingers put that on the bottom Give it a squeeze. Got some that's come out. We'll clean that up. Get, uh, keep going with the others and then um, figure out our spacing. I want four on here. We could do five, but if that uh, powder paint starts to fluff at all or as you're moving things around, I find a little bit extra room goes a long way. So uh, we're going to do four on this piece of wood, uh, which is. I bought it as is just for ease 24 inches so it's a two foot piece of wood gonna fit four of these really nicely 
After these are all set up, we get our spacing right, then we'll drill a hole and get our tube in there and then fill that hole up with silicone. So you wouldn't have to do this, I don't think, because I think the seal is good enough. Um, the air seal is good enough by just connecting the two. I mean, you can push them down and make them pretty tight. Um, because it's the, it's, the, it's the solid piece, it's the permanent piece, you could go through and um, glue each one of those. Just put a little bead enough um, to hold it. Really, the, I don't think it's as much about the air in this case as it is you want these um, pieces that are mounted on the wood to be secure enough that when you have your paint on top, right? So that's the whole unit. When you have your paint on top and you want to swap that out, you're pulling it, you're pushing it back and forth. You don't want to take this piece out with it. You only want this top piece. So I'm going to go ahead and break each one of these second pieces together, put a small bead right along the inside, and then solidify these two together. You don't even really need a seal all the way around because again we're just holding it together so even if it was just kinda hit it in a couple of spots coming around no need to clean it up on the inside because again the only thing that's going to be going through this is air we don't have to worry about um, uh, we don't have to worry about the powder hitting this part anyway okay everything is um, glued together in the two different pieces now we're going to put them together Again, just another bead of glue, like just in a couple of spots, to take the base, join it to the top. A lot of different ways you can put them down. Um, you can nail them down if you wanted to, although I don't think that's wise because we're trying to keep it airtight. So I'm actually going to just um, use the old glue once again. Now that I have the spacing where I want it, I'll leave it there, know where the, where the, uh, the edges meet, right? Pick it up, put a little dab on the bottom, and then put it right back down where it was. Okay, so those will set up. And next step will be, um, we're actually going to get the, the new uh, compressor out and get the tubes set up so that while these dry and get solidified um, before we drill them, because I don't want to drill them while they're at all loose or not cured. So we'll let that super glue dry, uh, get the compressor set up, and then we'll be able to drill into the bottom of these and then fill that uh, space around the tube. Insert the tube and then fill the space around the tube with silicone. So I got my paper bag. I went to Walmart and bought a bag of bags. I mean, they were like a dollar or two for a bunch of these. It lasts me forever. But what we want to do, this is going to be our filter material. What we want to do is find the side that doesn't have the glue um, where the two are brought together. There's a flat side that doesn't have any glue in it. We want that side. You don't want to trace the inside of this because that's going to be too thin. To um, the filter, we want the filter to actually come over this edge just a bit inside of the coupler so that we get a nice firm uh, water or, uh, airtight seal so we don't want to trace this we actually want to trace this so put it down we're going to do two of these trace it around one two 
two and then cut those out scissors exacto knife whatever you want to do cut them out to size like my scissors. I feel like I'm in grade school again. Okay, now we've got our filters and why we cut them wider than here is so they overlap a bit. So, put that down. And we want to take the top, again this is going to be for the paint, right? Hold it on the edges and just lightly lay it down there. Center it up so about the same amount of the brown is overlapping. And then push it straight down and you'll see, see how it's crinkling up and coming up the edges. That's what you want right there. Push that down. And the final product is an airtight seal between the paint that goes in here and the air that will come and make its way through this bag. Hence the fluid bed. I'll do that again for you. Cut it out to the size of the coupler. Hold it. Just lay it on there. Make sure that you can see all the same amount of brown and it's still centered up. And then just push it down and you should see those edges fold up and squeeze between the coupler and the top just like that and there we go pull it down just as far as you can and you've got your completed paint holders alright so it's time to move on to the air compressor need a little coffee pick me up this afternoon keep me going here so let's open this box up. The inflator didn't work. Yeah. So apparently it's designed, well one, mine had problems. The digital readout was screwed up. But also apparently it's designed that once it hits that poundage, it shuts off. So the valves shut off the valve, it automatically gets to the pound, shuts it off. So, didn't work. Plan B, bought a compressor. Let's open this up. So as you can see, new shirt, it's because it's the next day. I got bogged down in a lot of stuff. Uh, I had to take some stuff back to the store and I couldn't figure out how I wanted the final design to look. And once we drill the holes in the bottom, you're pretty well set on the design. So I wanted to make sure I got it to where I wanted it to be before I made that final decision. So I did want to show you a couple of things though. Um, so this is just quarter inch tubing. I got this from Lowe's, like three bucks. Quarter inch tubing. And then I got uh, three of these. These are quarter inch T's made to go with the tubing. And then for valves, got these guys here, little shark bites, so we don't have to worry about uh, different connections. Shark bite, quarter inch OD valves. So what I'm going to end up with is I think all of the um, connections and all of this over here get out of the way so the connections sort of like that the valves are going to be down here out of the way and then I'll run the tubes bind them up and run them into the the bottom of these cups wherever I feel like they they should go um, one thing about the tubing so this tubing uh, is really stiff. It's quarter inch, everything else is quarter inch. As you jam it on, um, it's pretty tough. So what I ended up having to do, turn the heat gun on a bit, put just the tip in front of the heat gun for 
no more than two three seconds that loosens up the the tip quite a bit and that allows you to to shove it on there and get a pretty decent um, seal so and then I for these I just put some tape on it I like the added security of a little tape just in case but you can see there that's one that heated up both sides shoved it on so I'm going to continue to do this put this one on and then um, I'll come back once the tubing has all been run and right before we um, drill the holes. Alright, so we've got our finished product here. You see the, the this will be the main input tube for the um, air compressor. Goes off to the T, and then we've got four valves coming off of each. That'll sit on the end. We'll run the tubes this way into each of the uh, fluid beds. One thing to note that I found as I was working through this, um, as I mentioned, you want to put it on the heat put this tubing on the heat but don't just heat the tip you need to heat about I don't know an inch or so half inch at least down because as the as the tubing moves onto the uh, T you'll want that the tubing to be loose enough even beyond just that first quarter inch half inch to give you um, room to push it up so make sure you get move it up and down it only takes a couple seconds but make sure you do at least about an inch make your life a lot easier. All right, I think this will be the final design. Hopefully you're not cringing too bad. I know there's a lot of different ways that we could have done this and you guys probably have way better ideas than I do. But, uh, and if you do, drop them down in the comments. Love to hear about it. Maybe I can redo this, take all those suggestions and comments and uh, redo this in the near future. But for now, we're gonna drill some holes and then fill in around put the, the the hoses in the tubes in make sure that we have uh, the right amount of, of space in there nothing's blocked off and then use some silicone to um, airtight around the tube all right quarter inch drill bit since we have quarter inch tubing we want to take up as much of that space with the tubing as possible come in here and drill a hole Alright, does it fit? Oh yeah, that's gonna, that almost works without silicone. I mean it is a really tight fit, but we'll put just a dab on the outside. No need to do it on the inside with this tight of a fit and with the outside covering. But we'll put just a little bit of a layer right around the end there. And actually, the space inside is looking pretty good. So you see the tube coming out right about halfway. I don't think we need to cut anything. All right, all the tubes are in. Cut to size, trimmed a couple. Last step here, I just squeezed some silicone into a uh, into a bowl here, grab it with a toothpick and just put it around the edges. Make it as neat as you want, obviously. Function over form is the should be the name of this video because the form is suffering, but I think the function is gonna be good. Alright guys, final product. The uh, silicone is all cured up at least enough to hold um, the air got the tank filled up and we are rocking and rolling this is what the
beds should look like if you did it right. Every paint will act a little different. These are all interchangeable. Pull them out as I want to. I will say that these valves um, are very, very touchy. You can see that they're just barely turned on. Um, it doesn't take much to get them going, and if you're not careful, the paint will explode out of the top. So anytime you're starting with fluid beds, it's always good to keep the lid on, maybe a little cockeyed, just so those initial uh, air, sometimes explosions, will be caught and doesn't go all over the place. There you go, a four stall fluid bed ready to uh, dip some jigs and get stuff painted up. So that's it. Hope you guys got a lot of value out of today's video as we took small fluid bed setup to a little larger. Allow me to do a few extra things. I'm excited to start using it and glad you joined me today to do it. Uh, if you haven't taken the step to do a fluid bed on your own, even if it's just one little aquarium pump directly to just one of these, uh, it's well worth your time. So I encourage you to do that. If you want to take the plunge and go all out, do a, a four, six, eight, ten. I mean, sky's the limit as long as you've got a compressor and able to um, control the air. Sky's the limit on what you can do. But Safe to say, a fluid bed is going to take your jig painting to the next level. Hope you enjoyed today. Thanks for joining me. And hey, by the way, if you're curious what this the channel's name is all about, Soli Deo Gloria, SDG, Custom Lurecraft, click on that link right below. If you want to see some good jig tying with um, some rabbit zonkers and silicone rubber, all that good stuff, click on the link right over here. Otherwise, until next time.